Last time on Bugging Out, a guru, David Grayson, advised, think past our first reactions. When it comes to eating bugs. But before we get too crazy, today we have safety and cleanliness. So grab a scorpion and let's get to it. I'm a full spectrum chef. I'll cook anything you want. So when I heard eating bugs is the next big thing, I decided to face my fear to discover what it's all about. In a magical kitchen with me, Mosquito, a bearded magic dragon. In Buggin' Out with Chef Pee In Mosquitoes, the bearded magic dragon's magic kitchen. Cause everyone's doing branded content these days, and so am I. This here is a desert hairy scorpion. They are active and aggressive, and my boy Mosquito, he just does not like them. Right, Mosquito? I've been stung. Under UV light, these babies fluoresce, making it so easy for collectors like myself to go out into the wild and just capture them if we want like a little late night snack or something. I know you're terrified to eat this scorpion right here, but scorpions are just like lobsters and crabs. They all are part of the same family, arthropods. So just look at it and know it's gonna be just as delicious as that crab or lobster that you love so much. And let's go, we're gonna go eat it right now. Don't worry, we are not insane because it's totally harmless to humans unless, of course, you're allergic. But how are you supposed to know you're allergic? You just take the scorpion and you dump it on your hands. And hey, slowly. hey, wait a minute, don't do that. Oh my bugging gosh, it is David George Gordon. That's right guys, the bug chef in the kitchen. David George Gordon has authored 20 books on topics from snails to sharks, been featured in countless publications and TV appearances as a champion of entomophagy, serves them up at the most prestigious museums, universities, and events. If anyone knows bug safety, it's him. What's up? So what are you going to do with those scorpions? I am making a dessert dish with these scorpions. Sounds fabulous. And of course, you're going to follow some rules to make sure that this all works out just right. Do you have some suggestions? You know, I think the dangers of eating bugs are greatly exaggerated. But even so, you still want to follow some basic procedures. One of them, I believe, is cooking the bugs as much as possible so that you're not worrying about germs or parasites. I mean, you probably wouldn't eat raw chicken or raw pork for the same reason. That's why I wrote a cookbook, not a uh, foraging guide. <laughs> for the cook who has everything. A lot of people think that you have to get a toothbrush out and start getting all the dirt off of them. But really, just, you know, freeze them, defrost them, rinse them off, and then they're good to go. That's pretty much all you need to do with that. Well, you know, a lot of people, like if you're eating chicken or cows or something like that, or I've gone hunting a couple of times and you have to field dress the animal, you have to take out the guts because that's, you know, they think that that sack with all the poop in it is germy. Do you yeah. have to take anything out of the insects at all or can you just really eat the whole thing? You know, you can really eat the whole thing, but it might be a good idea to let them purge in other words, put them somewhere where they can be alive, but uh, don't feed them for a day. But the real issue is that a lot of people are allergic to uh, shellfish. They would be allergic to insects as well. That's a really good point for people to know. If you have a shellfish allergy, you're probably going to have an insect allergy too. Absolutely. Now, do you have like an overall message that you can leave us with? Yeah, I really think people need to get over their attitudes about bugs and give this a try. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by how good a lot of them are, particularly if they're prepared by a master chef such as you. Oh, thank you very much, DGG. Well, thank you very much for having me over, and I'm definitely going to check in on the end results here because this conversation is making me hungry. All right, see you later. See ya. Now we're going to cook these scorpions. Like any insect, you're gonna wanna freeze the scorpions before cooking with them because that is the most safe and humane way of cooking with them. We're gonna rinse them off like DGG suggested. There's a little sand debris from when it was alive and burrowing. Ah! Just kidding. <laughs> you're gonna want to remove the stinger and the venom gland. The venom in these stingers, it's not crazy or anything. It's like a bee sting if you get stung, but we're gonna really wanna cook it thoroughly just to make sure we don't ingest any of that raw venom because that can make us a little sick and if we're allergic, even more so. Oh wow, that was easy. 
Let's see, where is that venom? Oh! Oh my god, there it is. There's the venom right there. I'm just gonna. Wow, that tastes really good. It's somewhat salty sweet. It's kind of like caviar juice. Like if you opened up a caviar jar and you know all that liquids that, that's in there, that's kind of like the taste of this venom. I'm being adventurous, that's what this show is all about. But I want you guys to be safe because I do feel that my tongue is going a little numb. But that was a good try. If you're adventurous, go for it. We're gonna just drop it in here. And what Brian actually, ooh, hey, ow! <laughs> yes. She is frying. I'm gonna just let that one fry a little bit and see how it is since this is my very first time ever cooking a scorpion. All right, let's um, take a little taste and see, see what it's all about. Oh, wow. It's like a chicken wing. Wow, that is really crunchy and delicious. I was really afraid that this shell was just gonna be too tough. I didn't even know if I even believed that you could actually eat it. Mmm, all that meat in there, it tastes just like a chicken wing. I'm no longer afraid of these scorpions. I'm gonna just drop the rest of them into our oil and, woo, yes! <laughs> Basically, you'll know when they're done because they'll stop acting all crazy like it's the 4th of July or something Ow! <laughs> in that pan. Um, it's really not that dangerous, but there is oil going everywhere, so you might want to be a little more careful than I'm being. I'm doing all the work so that you don't have to do so much work. I'm gonna dip our scorpions into the chocolate. There we go. That one's looking good. Get it on the plate. Crystallized ginger sugar. And now we're gonna just throw them in the freezer and let them set. And you'll also notice that I chocolate dipped some strawberries and also put some mint on there for a little effect. And now we're gonna just plate. I'm gonna put two of the strawberries on here. And then I'm gonna throw our scorpion on there as if it's trying to just like climb its way straight into your mouth. Scorpions are not something you're gonna eat like on a daily basis as an entomophagist. This is something for those special occasions, like a birthday party or a bar mitzvah. Although I would check with the rabbi to make sure how kosher these things are before you eat them. You ready? Here goes. Oh my God. It's really a lot of substance there. It's kind of like chocolate covered chicken wings. <laughs> really. It has a little fishy taste to it on the inside as well, kind of like shrimp, like it's related to. If your guests can get over the mental hurdle of eating a scorpion, I think they're really going to enjoy this. And until next time, when we have more insects to cook, I'm Chef PV, over and out. Next time on Bugging Out, we got some hornworms in the kitchen and talking nutrition. So if you need more reasons to get on the bug chain, don't miss out.